So we'll get our program started tonight. And I just wanna uh, let everybody know that we're welcoming Doug Wagoner tonight. Uh, Doug is a Sacramento native uh, whose uh, early art skills led, led him to a career of 35 years in advertising design. Um, and that was in the San Francisco Bay Area. And after retiring, uh, Doug concentrated uh, those skills uh, into fine art painting. He enjoys watercolor, acrylic painting, and oil painting, but his first love is pastel, which he's going to be demonstrating for us tonight. Uh, Doug has many local, national, and international awards uh, to his credit. Uh, he's achieved the Distinguished pa uh, Pastelist designation with the Pastel Society of the West Coast. And last year, the International Association of Pastel Societies presented him with their uh, Master Circle Award. Tonight, Doug is going to be presenting a demonstration to examine the use of aerial perspective. Um, any painting media can employ this approach to achieve a convincing view from foreground to background and instead of vantage point perspective to show distance, he will show how atmosphere in a painting or in a pastel can achieve the same vision through a variety of techniques. So we want to uh, welcome Doug to our uh, our meeting tonight. And uh, Doug, I'll turn the meeting over to you. OK. Uh, what I want to demonstrate is um, everybody knows what perspective, or they should know that uh, this is what I call linear perspective, in the sense that here is a horizon line back here. And if you drew a dot or put a dot right there and all of these converging lines would go back to that spot with these telephone lines and buildings and, and whatnot, that is linear perspective. And you can see that in a lot of drawings, but what I wanna base this uh, demonstration on is the fact that there is a lot of, um, atmosphere and a painting that can achieve what we call perspective. And uh, this is an image showing the, if you look straight up in the air, you'll see a lot of blue sky. But if you look this way, you're gonna see all of this haze, which is atmosphere in the sky. So this way is, you can see, you know, dark blue sky, but this way you're gonna see a lot of definition as far as the uh, haze in the atmosphere. And I think everybody remembers uh, Red Wednesday or Orange Wednesday. This is our usual fog in the morning. And that's the atmosphere that I'm talking about. But this piece shows a combination of linear as well as the atmosphere with the darker sky and it gradually starts picking up that compounded haze that goes back into the background. Here's another look at perspective in the sense that these cloud shapes get increasingly smaller as it goes back in the distance. And that's another use of perspective, but look at the dark sky and then down through and that haze area right through here. And that's that shows distance as well as this very hazy cloud or uh, mountain pattern back here. This is taken up in um, Napa County at the, um, oh, what's his name? Coppola's um, vineyard up there, looking across the valley. And I hope it's still there. This is, uh, we vacationed last year 
in New York. And uh, this was a barn on a uh, farm that had, the, this is uh, like 1841 or something like that, this place was built. But you can see the, the definition of this haze as it goes back. And that's what I'm talking about, this aerial or atmospheric perspective. It goes back in the distance. This is a painting I did of um, Lake Lily up above Fallen Leaf Lake near Tahoe. And this a beautiful little lake at the end of a uh, the run that goes up there, the road. And uh, this is a very good example of how defined everything is up front here. But as it goes back in distance, you start seeing these layers and layers of haze that is indeed indicative, indicative of uh, the aerial perspective of I'm going to be talking about. So any questions so far? I don't see any, Doug. OK. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to get right into uh, showing you a painting that uh, I started. Here's my setup with clothespins. This is a spacer between the head of the clothespin and that bottom piece. Come on. But as you can see, it's pretty flat as far as definition uh, or this uh, perspective that I'm talking about. So what I am thinking of doing is just lightly, well, that's a little bit too dark. I just dragged this across here a little bit. And I've already sprayed this so that's I do spray my pastels to fix them to a point. I like the last the last uh, stab at it to be completely uh, free of uh, spray because I sometimes it will darken everything. But you can see how I'm providing that uh, step back behind. Uh, we have a question. Yes. We have a question. Sure. Uh, what is the media you, that you're using? It's a chalk pastel, is it not? It pastel is pastel. Chalk is chalk. There's two different things. Chalk is made out of gypsum that's cheap, and uh, it's just colors are added to it. Mm -hmm. Pastel is a pure pigment that every paint, watercolor. Uh, acrylic or whatever starts with. And uh, when you start with a pigment that's pure um, and then add oil to it or acrylic medium, but this is pure pigment. There's nothing but a little bit of a binder to hold it together. And uh, that's why I love it so much because it's, it's pure, it's not, uh, Mm -hmm. And what uh, what is the surface that you're painting on? Someone asks. Um, this is um, gator board, which is like a foam core, but it's uh, there's a piece of it here, and they can see that it's it's really very strong. Foam core, you can put your uh, thumb through it. This stuff is, uh, the core is very tough as well as the surface. And it's very lightweight, but 
when you finish a painting, you can you can frame it right now. You don't have to mount it or anything. And what I've done is to make my own surface is uh, there's a product called Golden Pastel Medium, and it has a pumice in it already, which is a little bit of a sandy surface. And I take an old beat up brush that I've had for years. And if I plan it right, sometimes I can use that to my advantage to follow the uh, surface of the mountains or a valley or a roadway or whatever. And um, I just like the way it, uh, it handles because it's, it's very durable. But you can see how we can start uh, stepping back. Even here, I can start uh, But you can see that the, now you can see the definite steps between here, there, and there. And that's what we call uh, atmospheric perspective because it goes back in the distance from the foreground to the background. Nice thing about pastel too is it's dry. You don't have to wait for it to uh, set up or anything. It is dry right off the bat. And a lot of people are afraid of it, but once I think I've been working it with uh, pastel for like 40 years, I guess. And uh, I trust it for what I want it to do. You just have to make sure that uh, you make allowances for uh, what you need. But does that all make sense to you as far as uh, how that uh, steps back? I can even brighten that uh, front here to separate from the background. I don't want to get it too bright because if I get this too bright, then this will knock backwards. So I can almost take that to the degree that uh, this needs to be brighter in some cases. And here's some of that uh, texture that comes through from my old fashioned brush. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. And you can apply these same principles to any medium, whether it's watercolor or oil, or acrylic or something, whatever you like. So that's that one. Let's try another one. Uh, Doug, you're working from yep. a, a photograph with that. Is there a photograph that's your uh, subject? Ah, there we go. Okay. Perhaps you showed that before. Yeah. And uh, this one is another one over on Angel Island. And you can see all these as we call naked ladies all over there. But uh, I wanted to show that even though this is starting to get a little um, too much information over here and to simplify that, 
I've got this one. Oh. Give it a break. Not really. I just have to peel it up and get it in there. I need a flat blade. Maybe that. Yeah, I do. Hang on, everybody. Get my tool belt out. <laughs> But the same rules apply to the values here are very similar to these are pretty close, but I want to break that up to send it back in the background just So you can see that definition that puts it further back in space. To the point that uh, if I want this to Everything warmer gets closer to the foreground. This is sort of looking back towards Tiburon. But do uh, you understand what I'm trying to say is about this perspective that that's atmospheric and not uh, linear? Um, someone asks, Doug, are you using a softer pastel to add the background lights. Yes, these are all soft pastels. Okay, so that, they're, uh, they're all the same uh, sort of consistency. More or less, there are mm -hmm. some that are really, like this one is a new pastel. And um, this is very hard. It's the one of the first ones I use because it, when I put it down, I'll, I'm going to show you a demo of how I first start in a minute. But uh, these new pastels, it's probably the first pastel I ever used when I was a kid because they were sort of around at the time. But uh, they don't have that many colors. There might be 60 colors in here as opposed to 500 colors in some other brands. But, uh, and then I can go back in and put those uh, sailboat masts in. Here's a like buoys out in the that bay there by Angel Island. So that's kind of my demonstration as far as my painting style and whatnot. 
but I'm going to do another one that I've started. And this is uh, a shot down near uh, Big Sur. Oops. You uh, you use your own photographs? Yes, always. Uh huh. Uh, when working with advertising back in the day, I was uh, very uh, concerned about. Um, plagiarism as far as artwork and you uh, you had to sign contracts all over the place uh, in order to use somebody's photograph so I just adopted the whole issue of uh, never using somebody's uh, image that they had taken themselves mm -hmm. so everything that I have as far as I think on my computer I have like 35,000 photographs and, is there oh, a, uh, Doug, is there a photograph that you'll be showing? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm just going to look for that. <laughs> oh, okay. Hang on a Okay, I don't think you can see that. I'll raise it up to. Yeah, we can't see it. Okay, there's my photo source. Mm. Okay. And I'll get back to the the painting. Now, again, I'm. <clears throat> This is that um, new pastel that uh, I used at the first. And I'm just blocking in. If you can, can think of everything that uh, you see in this picture has a dark background in it everywhere well you can't see that maybe I'll, i should show you that all of these uh, trees and rocks and whatnot have a very deep background no matter where you go and the one thing about pastel and oil too <coughs> as opposed to uh, watercolor is that we paint from dark to light as opposed to watercolor painting from light to dark I know some people take exception with that, but basically that's kind of the idea because when you keep adding watercolor, it gets darker and darker. Where here you can lay in these colors. Even in this back one, it's gonna be hazy. Uh, Doug, one of our members asks, uh, do you, you use a grid, it appears, right? You, you put yeah. that over the photo first and then... Yeah, I had, uh -huh. I had that... Uh, I had that uh, over uh -huh. the photo first, so I transferred all the images off of that like that. Uh-huh. Great. So... Um, then I take my trusty, as you can see, I've been using this brush for a very long time. And this, this particular surface that I make is so uh, rough that it really destroys brushes, but they, very, they do good service until that time. But what I'm gonna do is just, you can melt pastel. Huh. Are you and, using uh, water there? You're using that's water. That's a combination of water and, and alcohol. You can use water if you want, or denatured alcohol, 
Uh, I know that uh, denatured alcohol is actually banned here in California, but a lot of artists like it because it dries real fast. Put the picture here, they oh. can see it better. Okay. I'm just kind of getting rid of the grid lines right here now, which is still. What is the uh, uh, the proportion of alcohol to uh, water? I wonder. Oh, two to one, if you want oh, to. That much. Okay. Uh huh. And if if you're really you know interested in doing it, and when you you get into it, uh, it's sort of like uh, you can make your own blend. It doesn't. It's not rocket science at all. It's uh, like I say, you can use pure water if you want. That's how I start the painting. It's just blocking in most of those darks. At this point, you guys, you guys can all go take a cigarette. Because <laughs> I'm going to use my trusty how about this for an oldie? Yeah. But it works really good. But uh, it's, it's basically, oh, yeah. maybe I'll turn it just a tickle. Is there something about uh, that start to a, a work that uh, creates a surface of some kind, Doug, that uh, is the purpose for why you do that? No, it just, uh, it's part of the design and the composition. Uh-huh, okay. That uh, if you're trying to create those, um, and, and this is sometimes too, like I forgot to put these little rocks out here in the in the water, but I, I don't have to put them all in there, I can, one of the biggest problems I think uh, a lot of artists in general have is that they try to copy the exact everything right down to the uh, grommets on a canvas or something. It's just, you don't have to. You can edit the heck out of everything and just uh -huh. put in what you want. You don't have to, you know, adhere to the actual photograph uh -huh. because that's, that's what you're there for, is to make your own decisions about stuff. As I say, it, uh, it helps when you're getting all your darks in because the darks are all of your shadows. Everything in between the branches or the crevices and the rocks. It's uh, 
all that information that you are looking for. And you said and that you work from dark to light, so you can always lighten it up, right? Oh, always. Yes. In fact, I, I'll show you right now where, where that little spot is. Uh -huh. You can go right over the top. It's uh, beautiful stuff because uh, you don't have to worry about, uh, oh, it's going to bleed into that. Well, sometimes you want it to bleed in. And uh, I know a lot of people that uh, are mixing their, even in oils, they uh, like to blend on the canvas instead of making a pile on their palette. This is where um, all your decision making comes in that, yeah, I don't want that there. I'm going to pull it over there because I'd like to see it, you know, a different direction. can cut in these branches, little sky holes here and there. But see how fast I'm, I'm getting information down. It doesn't uh, take too long to get. And it's just you're constantly making choices on the fly. But again, that background. This is a 10 by 14 size board. But what if back here you wanted another little island or something off the coast? Well, just drop this down a little bit. And you've got another spot over there that turns up instead of out. A lot of this uh, stuff is directing the viewer's eye throughout the painting. And you can do that uh, by applying uh, some directional things like just that little hump there. How are we doing on time? We're doing okay. We've got about uh, 20 more minutes. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Well, I could probably get in pretty heavy in this. Mm -hmm. But uh, the colors are beautiful. Yeah, it doesn't, it hasn't taken me this long to get into. And here's some of those brush strokes. Can you see that? Yeah. That the brush left with the acrylic um, underpainting or surface that I created. Uh, Doug, that's a golden product. It's a it's a pastel yes. a pastel surface. Yeah. It's um, actually it. If you wanted to paint on a an old door or whatever, 
masonite or something, you can apply this stuff and it has enough grit in it that uh, you can paint pastel on anything. This is it right here. Uh huh. And it's just a, it's kind of a, a gray color. It's almost like a, a gesso in a sense. But uh, I have a mix that I keep on hand. It's almost like um, sourdough bread and the mother and all that. Mm -hmm. I keep it going all the time. I just keep adding stuff to it, but it's kind of a warm uh, gray that I, I paint underneath there. In fact, this is, that's pure, that underpainting right there. Mm keep uh, that large palette that I showed you, I keep a little pie pan full of my pastels that I'm working with, as opposed to trying to go back and find one in all these colors. So I don't have to search too much. These are uh, not hard but they're kind of medium. And this is a Creta color. You can get that at Joann's or wherever, but they, they work fine. It's all about getting something down. Are we having fun so far? <laughs> Lots of good tips. We're, we're happy with the tips. The, the group is chiming in. But no matter, I think when I was doing advertising and whatnot, the reason uh, we used to do what we call comps or comprehensives and it would be uh, a fast idea layout of a piece of advertising for a campaign or whatever and it, you might have to do six or seven and present to an art director at an agency and pesto was one of the fastest ways of doing stuff and uh one of my good friends is uh by the name of Bill Cohen. He works for Pixar and uh, he's done a lot of the films and he uses pastel mm -hmm. because it's quick. And they, it, when they go into a meeting, they say, well, we need an answer for this or that. And he'll go back to his uh, space and knock out a bunch of stuff and boom, he's got an answer right now. I think Bill has been to uh, one of our meetings in the past Doug. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We have a question, sure. um, Doug. Are there any tips on using pastels on mixed media artwork? Do they play nicely with acrylics, for instance? Yes, yes, they do. How would uh, that fact, be? That's, that's what I showed you. That golden uh, product is an acrylic. 
Okay. And, uh, it, the only thing that's different about it, it has pumice added to its uh, formula. Okay. To have that kind of a gritty surface in there. Yeah. And you can, uh, one of our famous uh, pastelists, uh, he does both watercolor oil as well as pastels, but he's really um, into uh, the uh, pastel medium. And his name is Richard McKinley. Uh, he's one of our best teachers because he's so poetic and he, he's just really damn good. Uh, but he can do an underpainting that I have done such earlier He'll do it either in watercolor or oil. Oil might take a little bit if you put a dryer in it or something uh, to dry faster. But uh, yeah, you can, pastel goes over just about anything. It just depends, um, you know, experiment with it because it's. Uh, so you'd, you'd let your, your acrylic uh, dry first, obviously. Oh, sure. And then go over it with yeah. pastel. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Now I'm just trying different colors and uh, values because I just want to play around with that shape. Mm -hmm. And we, in the pastel world, we just, there's a lot of things we do just because of it's a nice shape. And, uh, Either it's warm or cool. Now, that right there to me is too warm. It's it's coming forward too far. So mm -hmm. I need to mm -hmm. cool that down. To send it back further. And you're doing that with a darker color or a lighter color? That's a lighter color yeah. over the top of that purple I put down. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that when I'm doing this, as I'm going along, I keep waiting for the painting to, to start telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. I think you've, a lot of you have experienced that, that as you get into it, uh, it's, it's starting to speak to you, say, you know what, you need to move that over a little bit. And that's what I mean about it starting to talk to you. I'm continually trying to push that back further and further. My wife gets mad at me sometimes because I'll be down here working on something and She'll walk by and say, oh, that looks pretty cool. And she'll come by the next time. And I've completely washed it off. Oh. I'm saying, I didn't like it. So it's gone. <laughs> but. It was it talking to you. I'm just trying to put some of these soft ridges back in here. But as you can see, it didn't take me long to get into the painting that far. It's got an abstract quality to it that's very appealing actually right now. Uh, yes, and I I will continue to work to keep that, but at the same time, I want to uh, start doing some detail here and there. Uh -huh. And uh, bring out some of the forms that indicate that there's a turning of the, of the shape from uh, from the sun side to the uh, the shadow side.
is like this is turning. This is all in the sun here. And the same with this tree. And these over here. The interesting part is you can keep working it, uh, working it till it becomes more defined. Yes. And yes. more like, as, you know, closer to the photograph, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, this is what we're, even if you're out in plain air painting, the scene is dictating to you what you are sitting there trying to achieve to uh, replicate that to a point. Yeah, but uh, you don't have to. I mean, you can use your baton to edit anytime you want, because mm -hmm. that's your job. Because the viewers are not looking at your plain air scene where you're painting. They're going to look at what you finished with. And it doesn't matter to them that uh, there was a bus parked in the way. You edited it out. It gets to a point, though, at uh, you can put too much what we call product down that it gets to be, uh, I'm gonna move this over to go. It starts filling up all the grooves. And uh, like Bill Cohen, my gosh, he can do a painting and you can hardly tell that he used too many sticks of pastel because he, he's got it so formulated that uh, he doesn't use too much to get it, what he wants down there. Mm -hmm. How are we doing on time? A few more minutes, whenever, you know, it, it's up to you too, Doug. Okay. Yeah. As to where you want to stop or, yeah. Well, I just wanted to show you how I, yeah, I really get into uh, a piece by using that. Uh, uh, the question from the group uh, yeah. Do you find, Doug, that the, uh, the tooth on the surface uh, fills up after a bunch of layers so that yes, you, it does. Can't, you can't continue to apply any more pastel? Uh, that's when you can actually feel that you're pushing pastel past one another and it, it's starting to pile up. You does can it get actually muddy? Feel does that. it get muddy? I mean, um, not so much muddy, but I, I think if you started mixing your colors too much, yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah. But what you do at that point is um, then you fix it. And what the, I have a fixative that uh, it's uh, called uh, SpectraFix. And it was originally designed here in um, Emeryville. And this is what it is. And it's a spray on product? Yes, it is. It's a pump spray. It doesn't have any aerosol in it. And it's basically, it's a, a byproduct of um, casein, which is a milk product. So uh, I could spray it. it. The only thing that you smell is a kind of alcohol in this that mm -hmm. they use as a medium. And once you fix it, then you can continue to do more over it? Yeah, because what the fixative does, it settles the pastel down into the surfaces, all the grooves. 
so you can add more. I'm just thinking trees here now, not necessarily following anything, but Oh, I should have added, as you can see all of these darks in the background here, mm -hmm. I should have added that uh, darkness in behind. But sometimes you can just go back in and put your darks in, bingo, bango, right over the top of it. That's what I mean about painting from dark to light. Yeah. That's a little bit too hot there. I'm gonna cool it down. Again, that's atmospheric. And you're using different uh, parts of the uh the stick as well. Uh, yes, you're uh, using a side, a side angle there to make those yeah. little cuts. Every every part of it, I, I, I like to use the sides of it for big strokes and the edges of it, the points. Some people shave them down to like a pencil shape mm -hmm. um, to make their strokes right. Um, there's a um, one of our gurus in the pastel world by the name of uh, Albert Handel. He actually, uh, like he's doing tree shapes and uh, he will take his, uh, well, give me a square one here. And he will go like this. Uh-huh. And that gives you a, a little different look. Instead of strokes, he just kind of rumbling, rolling it across. But you can see what kind of marks it makes when you roll it. It's kind of interesting. That's a lot of fun, yeah. So, uh, are we there yet? I think we're we're almost there. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. Uh, It's getting there. The one thing that uh, there's two thoughts 
about painting. Uh, the plein air where you're out on location painting and the studio painting. But I, I really think that in order to make a good studio painting work, uh, you really need to go out and uh, work in on location or plein air. You have a better idea of how things look and the atmosphere when you're out there, you can sense the sounds and the, the smells and the, you know, the, the birds and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But when you come back in the studio, if you carry those senses with you, uh, your painting will look a lot better. Uh, I can't say enough that uh, pastel uh, or painting uh, looks a lot better. And if you know what it looks like in real, real time, because nature is, is your best teacher out there. It's like uh, people frown on uh, actually taking uh, live model classes. But I can tell you that uh, some of the great painters of the world have used the live model to show them how to paint. And uh, because of the proportions, if you can get those right, you can paint anything. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I can probably make this work. Um, if people would like to ask Doug questions, we'll have a short uh, question and answer period. You can unmute yourself and, uh, and ask a question. You know how to do that by going down to the, the little microphone and unmuting yourself. Not at the picture. What? Is somebody talking? <laughs> well, <laughs> my kibbits, my kibbits are over there. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, Doug, I'm not sure that we have any additional questions. Uh, we want to thank you very much for a uh, sure. very interesting presentation and. Uh, uh, a beautiful uh, work, and uh, thank you so much uh, for coming. Uh, oh, to I'm our glad to do tonight. it. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, and uh, eventually, uh, Doug's um, a video of this uh, presentation will go up on our El Cerrito Art Association website. So I hope you'll all look there if you'd like to refresh your memory on some of the. Uh, uh, wonderful techniques that Doug shared with us tonight. Okay. Well, okay. good night, everybody. Thank you so much, Doug. All right. And thanks, everybody. Okay. I'm going to end the meeting. Big clap. I see people are clapping. So, <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, I don't know how to unmute everybody. So, there we go. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>